All right, in this lesson, we're going to pick up where we left off after transcription. Um, just as a reminder, protein synthesis is a two-step process. The first step is to make um, the mRNA molecule that we're going to use, right? So that's getting the, the mRNA from the piece of DNA that contains the gene that we want. And remember, that's going to take place in the nucleus. So in the nucleus is where translation happens. And then once translation happens, what you can see is our mRNA molecule here snakes out of the nucleus and makes its way to the ribosome. Now the ribosome has two parts. You have this large sub subunit here and this small subunit down here. And the uh, mRNA is going to actually get fed through the ribosome whoops, right through here like this. Okay, so it kind of gets um, fed between the small and large subunits. And then the ribosome is going to move along this mRNA. And as the ribosome moves or the mRNA shifts in this direction, you're going to see tRNA molecules coming in. Um, you know, they just kind of drop in in both chambers. And there are actually two tRNA chambers in the ribosome. They'll drop in when they um, have a matchup of the code on the mRNA in those places. So um, that's going to kind of be how that works. Now, um, before we go any further, I feel like we need to define a few terms that are kind of important here. Um, the first of these is codon. And we mentioned codons um, back when we did that hierarchy of genetics and we said that codons are made of nucleotides, right? So let's make this a little clearer. A three nucleotide sequence in DNA or in mRNA is called a codon. So A, T, G is a codon. That's three letters, one for each nucleotide. That would be what it would look like in DNA. The same codon in mRNA would be A, U, G, right? Okay, so there's the mRNA version of the codon. Now remember, DNA is double-stranded, right? So if there's an A, T, G on one side of the DNA molecule, the other side of the DNA molecule is going to have the complementary sequence of T, A, C, right? So this side would be the codon side. And mRNA only has codons because it's only single-stranded. But DNA, being double-stranded, also has on the other side a three nucleotide sequence that's complementary to the codons called the anticodons. Now, in addition to DNA having anticodons, the tRNA also has anticodons. And again, the codons and the anticodons are complementary to one another. Okay, so codons and anticodons will match. And that's going to be important because what that means is that our tRNA molecule can match up its code to the mRNA molecule at the ribosome. And that's going to allow us to know that, yes, this tRNA is supposed to come in at this spot because it matches the mRNA perfectly. And that tRNA then will be carrying a specific amino acid that fits into the protein right at that spot. All right, so... This is where it gets a bit more involved, um, and the reason why it gets involved is because um, this is kind of a mechanical process, and you're seeing it with a, a set of still pictures, and that's kind of hard to explain. So this is not something that you're really drawing in your notes. Um, you're just trying to understand it, and then there's a video clip available for you to watch in the DNA and protein synthesis Prezi that's posted. Um, so just understand, explaining this is kind of weird. You really need to see this in action. But what happens first, here's our mRNA, right, right there. And here's our small subunit on the, whoops, right there. There's the small subunit on the, um, the ribosome. And the larger subunit on the ribosome is going to come in and snap down on top. So that's what we've got. Now, um, every mRNA sequence is going to start with something called a start codon, which is what you see right here. 
Now some books will picture three um, chambers in the ribosome. Your book pictures two, okay? This this third chamber is really meaningless. It's just, it's going to be a place where a, a leftover tRNA is going to wait until it gets kicked out of the ribosome. So what happens is the first uh, tRNA drops in and fits because it matches with this start codon on the uh, mRNA. So the anticodon, the one anticodon that's exposed on the tRNA molecule, UAC, matches up with the AUG that's on the mRNA. Okay, now what's important is that you understand that each tRNA can only pick up one specific amino acid. Okay, so any tRNA that says UAC can only pick up methionine. Okay, so methionine comes in. The next tRNA falls into the second spot in the ribosome. And again, it's got a CAG on it that matches the GUC that you have on the messenger RNA. Again, anticodon to codon match. Now, that's important, again, because you're making sure that because these codes match, the right tRNA is coming in at the right spot. But what that ultimately does is means that these two amino acids up here now are put together in the right order, which means they're going to attach. So they're going to form that peptide bond. Now, remember, these amino acids are going to make our protein that we're after. Okay, so that's the important thing. Now, the other thing that you have to notice in the next picture is these, this newly peptide bonded baby protein that we're making remains attached to the second tRNA. What happens next is that the whole ribosome shifts over in this direction. The tRNA is then going to get moved over by one space. Okay, so our first tRNA that came in is now in the kickout spot, so it's going to get kicked over. The second tRNA is now moved into the primary chamber, and that leaves an empty chamber here. So that chamber has its own little code underneath it, um, and that code is UUC. So now a new tRNA that has the AAG, anticodon to match, can fall in. And again, when that happens, it's carrying a different amino acid, and that amino acid looks like proline is going to attach to our growing protein. And that's what happens. You just get a, a shift over, kicking one out, new one drops in. Then you get a shift over, kicking one out, right, new one drops in. And you just keep shifting over, kicking one out, dropping a new one in, until you get to what we call a stop codon. So when the stop codon is reached, and there are several versions of this stop codon, but when that stop codon is reached, our protein is complete, and that's the signal for the ribosome to let go. It's going to drop off that, uh, that protein gets released. Any remaining tRNAs get kicked out and the mRNA gets kicked out. So that's how translation works. And like I said, we'll watch a video in a few minutes just to give you a better idea. All right. This next thing, what I want to do is show you then what does that mean for you? Um, the skills that you need to get this to work are kind of important um, because this is EOC important. The EOC is going to give you a DNA sequence like the one I've got here and this is the same one that's on your note sheet. So you just turn your attention to the note sheet. You're expected to be able to take that and make mRNA then tRNA and then find the amino acid sequence. Okay, So we have to make sure that you know how to take all of the steps here. So the first thing, remember, in transcription, the, the mRNA was copied from the DNA, right? So the mRNA has to match our DNA sequence. So ATG, excuse me, in DNA matches with UAC. CCG in DNA matches with GGC. GAG matches with CUC. CTA, and we keep going, right? And you guys know this, right? You can fill that in. Um, and just remember now, we're making RNA, so notice we're not using 
uh, you, the T, we're using the U. Whoops. G, A, G, C, A, U. Okay, so there's our sequence. And notice a common mistake that students will make is if they see a T on the DNA, they think, oh, T, that means U. And so you put a U there. But remember, um, you use the U only when you would normally otherwise use a T. Well, you would use a T across from an A, not across from another T, right? Okay, so there's the mRNA sequence. The tRNAs, remember, match the mRNAs. So the tRNAs are going to match up with this, complementary. So UAC goes with A, U, G, right? GGC goes with C, C, G, and so on. This one's going to match like this. And you just keep going. And again, sorry for my handwriting. The stylus uh, on the iPad is kind of sticky, so it's kind of hard to make this look neat. You do have a little bit neater version on your note sheet. All right. Now, some of you are really slick at this point, and you're saying, well, that's just the same thing here as the DNA strand, except that the, U's, the T's are U's. And you're right. Remember, both DNA and tRNA have the anticodons, okay? So we always make the messenger RNA from the anticodon side of DNA because that's the only way to complementary base pair it in. That's a good way of checking yourself, but make sure you know how to take all of these steps because the EOC is going to ask you to take all of these steps. All right, now the next thing is to find our amino acid sequence, and this is where the rubber meets the road. This is really important. You have a chart, and most of the time the chart's given to you in the form of mRNA codons. Okay, now I've seen this chart show up in other ways, but it's usually the mRNA codons. So, <coughs> excuse me, using this chart, you can actually read a sequence, and because the chart's in mRNA, the sequence we're going to read is the mRNA sequence that we made. We can read this sequence and we can say what are the amino acids that go in each spot that match with this. You have to be careful. You want to make sure you're reading only the mRNA line because the mRNA line matches the chart that we're given. So we're going to read each codon, okay, each codon to find our amino acid sequence. So the first codon is UAC. Now the way you use this chart is the first letter of the codon is always here, okay, on the left-hand side. So you start with the U. The second letter in the codon is always a cross. So U, A, they're going to come together right here. And the next one is C, the third letter is there, okay. So the C comes right across there. So U, A, C all come together right here. The amino acid that you end up with from that is tyrosine, and we abbreviate that TYR. The second one, GGC, G and G come together right here. The C is over here, and that's glycine, G, L, Y. C, U, C, C, U, and then the C is leucine, L, E, U. G, A, U, G and A come together here, U, that's aspartate or ASP, okay, G, A, G, G, A, G, should get glutamine or glutamate, I can't read that very well, but G, L, U, whoops, G, L, U, not G, L, Y, G, L, U, and C, A, U, C, A, U would give you histidine or H, I, S. So that's how you're going to read that chart. 